Gorka Morka was one of the specialist games set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It was functionally identical to Necromunda and its Warhammer fantasy cousin Mordheim, in that it was a narrative skirmish level war game, revolving around two or more players and their personalized band of fighters in a story-like campaign setting. Its selling point was that it was themed as the story of mobs of orcs fighting for survival, entertainment and riches upon the desert world of Angelus. This made it the only specialist game where the focus was on playing non-humans. An approach that has only recently been looked towards in the form of fantasy flight games Chaos focused Black Crusade and now as of January 2017 Gangs of Kamorag. Only three books for Gorka Morka were ever released. Dar Rules. Rulebook. Dar Other Book. Background Fluff. Scenarios. And Campaign Running. And Dig a Knob. Expanded Fluff. New Factions. Special Characters and New Missions. In addition. There was a short run of a magazine called Gubbins, added scenarios, weapons, Gubbins for vehicles, tips to build terrain, a new faction, and a scenario to use Necron's story. The backstory of Gorka Morka is a simple one. A space hulk full of orcs crashed upon the desert world of Angelus and miraculously managed to not kill themselves in the process. Since Angelus is a barren wasteland empty of life, the ticked off orcs are dedicated to gathering up all the technological scrap they can from the wastes and building themselves a new machine in order to get them off of the planet and get back to the Wyag due to certain little incidents, like the orcish inclination towards factionalism and a civil war that destroyed the miracle machine once. They couldn't decide whether it looked like Gork or Mork. The orcs of Angelus are ruled by their mech boys, who are busy working on Gork or Morka the aforementioned miracle machine, and keep the other orcs distracted by making them fight to gather the most scrap. Doing so is essential to get tags, which will assure the bearer of a place on Gorkamorka when it's finally finished. Gameplay For the most part, Gorkamorka played a lot like Necromunda and Mordheim. The primary difference was the use of vehicles. Instead of having rules for the number of occupants in a truck, one simply had to have enough space on the actual model to place the miniatures on. While this means that vehicles could be huge and hold a whole mob this generally resulted in crashing into everything and being immediately crippled by template weapons. As well, consider the risk of relying on one or two large vehicles. Your shit will get countered hard by the other players in the campaign and one bad roll that leaves your vehicle broken at the onset means being gimped or losing a match before it even begins. It's best to have as many specialized vehicles as possible, with backups and spares as needed. It should noted that the bases of Gorkamorka models were different when the game was released. Rather than using a standard 25mm circle base seen in standard Warhammer 40k, Gorka Morka used these strange egg-shaped bases. The idea was that the bases would be small enough to allow more models onto a truck. The truck model that came with the game could take no more than two 25mm bases before things got difficult, and it's not hard to imagine that the bases may have been introduced at a late design stage to accommodate this fuck up. Or, if you're feeling super cynical, maybe it was so players couldn't just buy the base game and suddenly have a good starting point for an orc army. Either way, you can't get these bases anymore but custom cut plastic at bases work just as well. And since modern orc vehicles have better carrying capacity anyway, you can probably just use 25mm circle bases. Although now orc boys are based on 32mm bases, the cycle of greed and scale creep being a reassuring hallmark of all GW properties. As in Necromunda, a warband consists of a mandatory leader and some troops, with options to further pad out the warband with rookie fighters and some specialists. Though what those specialists are depends on the mob in question. Orc warbands include spanner boys, rookie mech boys, and slavers, plus Gretchen as cannon fodder. Whilst diggers only have shamans and rebel grots only have banner wavers. Muties are an entirely different breed. They have no rookie fighters, instead having two different kinds of fighter, the tough funk and the fast snagger, and a mandatory specialist in the keeper, a mutie tech priest. All warbands start with a pool of 100 teeth, the proper orcish currency for the warband that doesn't use teeth. Muties. Teeth are instead representing renown, 
fame, or favors regarding their efforts. These teeth favors are used to buy all of the Warbands fighters, and their equipment, and any upgrades. So, needless to say, it's very important to consider your options. Campaign play mostly revolves around fighting scenarios in which you duke it out with other warbands over valuable resources. Victory in the favor of the random number god in your post-battle explorations is essential to survival, as a certain amount of currency points is spent after each scenario to represent your warband taking care of all the stuff it needs in order to survive. Getting fuel, ammo, food, spare parts, medicine, replacement hair squigs etc. In this, Gorkamorka is more forgiving than Necromunda, as there's no official rules about members deserting if your income is too low. It just means you got no extra currency to spend on anything like upgrading weapons, getting damage repaired, or buying new warband members. Conversely, so much of the campaign play between actual battles is random, as costs for upgrading weapons vehicles repairing or healing, or basically anything other than spending on new warriors or equipment tend to be determined by a cost of 1d6 teeth. After this, there's still no guarantee that what you've asked for will get done. Players of the right temperament may find increased entertainment value in this alone, and it certainly means the narrative doesn't stop when the actual game on a table stops. It does make it harder to plan, of course, but that's not an especially orky way of thinking anyway. Factions Orcs. Orcs are the primary faction of Gorkamorka. Divided along religious lines. Gorkas versus Morkas. Orcs dedicate themselves to fighting and gathering scrap for fun and to secure the tags they need to be assured of being taken off to the Warg when Gorkamorka is finally built. Diggus. When the Orcs crashed on Angelus there was a human ship. Implied to be an Adeptus Mechanicus exploration and research vessel in orbit having already landed a mission on the planet. The cataclysm of the Space Hulk's impact separated the humans into two factions, based on where they were at the time. Diggers are descended from those humans who were exploring the pyramids and the caverns below. Taking shelter under the planet's surface, they survived the holocaust above but descended into primitivism. Diggers have forgotten all about their ancestral connections to the Imperium and have come to revere orcs as the most awesome and impressive creatures they have ever seen. Therefore they try to emulate the orc lifestyle as much as possible. Orcs tolerate this with almost paternalistic disdain. It is, ultimately, much simpler than trying to wipe the diggers out. Especially since they have the protection of Dem Fennings under Dar Pyramids. The home of the Diggers is referred to as Morgug Derlurk Gulskadrig Snixlag. Fortress of ancient, terrifying power. Land of waiting death. Pain and destruction. This shows just how much dread the Orcs have of the place. Besides, the Diggers happily trade technological gear dug out from under the pyramids and scrap they have gathered for good Orky stuff and it's funny to watch them try and be Orcs. So it's not so bad. Gretchen Revolutionary Committee. Gretchen who have risen up in protest against the fact that they can't earn tags for Gorkamorka, even though they were enslaved for their orc masters. Muties. When the orcs crashed on Angelus, there was a human ship, implied to be an Adeptus Mechanicus exploration and research vessel already landed on the planet on a mission. The cataclysm of the Space Hulk's impact separated the humans into two factions, based on where they were at the time. Those who remained within their own ship, the now crashed Eternal Vigilance, or Eta Vigila, as the muties call it, mutated into horrifically deformed beings. Ironically, they retain more of their imperial culture than the diggers do, and as a result, they are dedicated to wiping out all other life on Angelus in hopes of being restored to the power and glory of their ancestors. Necrons, known only as Dem Fennings under Dar Pyramids. For whatever reason, they are oddly protective of the diggers who live under their pyramids and destroyed the orcs when they first tried to enslave the humans. While not normally playable in regular gameplay, there is a fan scenario in Gubbins that brings Necrons to field. Outside of the official factions, there are a few homemade factions. Here are just a few. Free bitters, added to the game by an article in the Citadel Journal, reprinted in Gubbins, basically outlaw orcs with a pirate theme. Slightly different from regular orcs due to some special skills and how they get income. Outlaw Motorcycle Club, 
another outlaw orc gang, as the name suggests. This mob uses a lot of motorcycles, more mobile than regular orcs, but still relies on spanner units to take care of bikes. Fear orcs fantasize orcs that use a lot of squigs and squiggoths. Dust rats, the survivors from an imperial outpost. Base station Angelus, established by the Adeptus Mechanicus expedition. Somewhere between Didus and Imperial Guard. Dark Elder, raiders that are looking for slaves. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedgear.co.uk. One stop shop for coom jar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Special characters. As with its relatives, Necromunda and Mordheim. Gorkamorka has a couple of different characters of particularly notorious repute roaming the wasteland, and sometimes they might even join a warband. Aside from deliberately seeking them out, there's also the option to make a single roll before a battle starts to see if a given special character will show up for that fight. The lower your mob rating compared to your opponents, the better the chance that this will happen. The latter option does give you their aid in a fight for free. But if you want to make them stick around, then you gotta pay for the privilege. Just as if you deliberately hire them in the first place, a finder's fee of 2d6 currency points, and then they counts as two models for determining expenses, due to their particular needs and tastes. Only orcs and diggers can use most of these character, except for the red gobbo who is obviously restricted to parties of the Gretchen Revolutionary Committee. Nazgrub Wurzag, a crotchety hermit of a scrap prospector, and also an unrecognized widboy. Though the orc mobs battling over scrap piles are certainly numerous, they aren't the only orcs out there in the desert looking for scrap. Some orcs want the teeth for scrap, but don't really want to hang out with other orcs to get it. What makes an orc take up the lonely? Hermit-like life of the scrap prospector varies a lot. Maybe they're just not right in the head, or perhaps they're so greedy that they just can't stand to share in the profit. Nazgrub kind of fits both categories. See, Nazgrub is something that the primitive techno-barbarian orcs of Angelus have no idea how to handle. An unrecognized widboy. Being too close to other orcs, especially when they're fighting, makes Nazgrub's head hurt which only tends to alleviate itself in a random but spectacular flare of telekinetic energy. Needless to say, as fun as this could be to watch, few orcs wanted him around, and so he struck off into the desert. Being a particularly greedy soul by orc standards, this suits Nazgrud just fine, as it meant he could focus on the most important thing. Finding da big one out there in the desert and becoming the richest damn orc on all of Angelus. In fact, he's so greedy, he actually has two special rules based on it. Scrap fever means he gains the benefit of hatred against any enemy model either carrying scrap or on a vehicle carrying scrap. Whilst thieving it means there's a 1 in 6 chance for each scrap counter you retrieve in the fight that Nazgrub will nick it for himself. Meaning you get zilch for it on the plus side. His psychic powers manifest as both precognition, giving you a chance of dictating which scenario you fight against a rival or could a gimob, and telekinesis, meaning he may randomly fire bolts of powerful destructive energy at people if he gets too close to fighting orcs. Bad orc dreguts. No orc really likes the pain boys, as they combine an already irritating tendency to get distracted and bodge up the work with a tendency to charge what orcs feel is far too many teeth for the actual quality of the work they do. But it is those pain boys who allow their experimental urges to get too far who acquire the dubious and deadly moniker of bad dog. Whilst most of these end up under their own knives when they piss off the wrong orc, 
A small few retain enough sense to scupper for the desert after they get the branding but before the lynch mob comes for them. Dregots is one of the more successful of such characters. Deemed a bad doc after infamously being unable to resist the urge to see what would happen if he fixed the head wound of the Gorka knob snackrat with a custom booster jet. Being crazy but by no means stupid, Dregots decided to leg it whilst Snackrat's boys were busy scraping their boss remains off of the side of Gorka Morka, lest he get a first hand demonstration of why they'd named themselves Dar Twisted Necks. Aside from his super lethal bone saw making him dead choppy in a fight, Dregots has the added bonus that the mob can use him to try and patch up their injured orcs for free. Of course, since he's working only with salvaged parts and is a bit of a loony, that's risky, imposing a minus one penalty to the roll on the big day table. Dreg McBlitzkut, working on Gorka Morka is a sacred responsibility that all mech boys are supposed to undertake. After all, whether the thing turns out to be a new space hulk, or a boarding platform to attract a new hulk, or something else entirely. No orc is getting off of this worthless dust bowl without it but, like all orcs, mech boys have an independent streak, and more importantly, work on Gorka Morka is done pro bono, and so there's a thriving sideline of mechanics working on their own projects. More devout mech boys are, of course, irritated by this lack of devotion, and the fact the upstarts are getting rich. So. Many orc inventors have issues getting their own dream machines built, especially if those projects are likely to consume a large amount of the precious scrap needed for Gorka Morka. Dreg McBlitzkut is one such mech, possibly cursed with the speed freak gene. Dreg Mech was always obsessed with the idea of getting orcs into the air. When he couldn't get any funding, he took matters into his own hands, stealing in a slowed of valuable parts. He created the first, and only, Diffcopter on Angelus. He now wanders the desert, hiring out his dead killy flying machine to any orcs willing to put up with his need for extensive amounts of fuel and parts. Dark Russia, a mysterious orc warrior who has had almost the entirety of his body replaced by cybernetics. Many mysteries surround the heavily modified cyborg known only as Dark Russia. Who was he before Dar accident that required him to be rebuilt into his monstrous new form? Why did the boss mechs of Gorka Morka feel obligated to save his life by rebuilding him as Dar 600 T fork after Dar accident? Come to think about it. What the Zog was Dark accident anyway no orc knows. All that is known is that Dark Crusher roams the wasteland, occasionally fighting alongside other mobs and intimidating or or striking new mech boys into patching up his temperamental, ever complaining cybernetics. As it stands, although he is incredibly clunky, impossible to hide, and prone to erratic fits, his temperamental rule gives him the head wound and old battle wound serious injuries. He is still an impossibly deadly killing machine, with a great mess of cybernetic upgrades. The Red Gobbo, the mysterious leader of the Gretchen Revolutionary Committee, and thusly the only special character open to rebel grot mobs. The Red Gobbo is a figurehead for Dark Comedy in the revolution as a whole. Even if the actual gobbo wielding the sacred club and wearing the trademark outfit changes from time to time. This makes his abilities and stat line generated randomly each time he appears. Although certain aspects are set in stone. As the revolutionary leader, he takes over the role of head honcho whilst present. And likewise he forces the mob to use honest d Allens, preventing them from lying to Dark Comedy after the battle. However, he's so inspiring that he offers his leadership and a chance to recover from penning to any friendlies within 6 inches, and he's a diehard who can always try to shake off being pinned, even without any buddies to support him. Mob analysis. Though only orcs, diggers. Rebel grots and muties can be played before homebrew mobs are included. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Orcs. Orcs are the mainstream mob in Gorka Morka, and thusly they are the average by which other mobs are checked. Decently priced and with good, strong stats, possessing a resistance to penning that no other mob shares, they are the simplest of the mobs to use, as they require nothing more than the basic rules. If orcs have a weakness at all, it can be said to be their dependence on odd boys to run their mob at full strength. Spanners keep the vehicles working. Slavers keep the grots. Who give orcs a small but vital boost in income generation. In line. So if either of these go down, 
your mob suffers a serious blow. Additionally, the faction mechanic actually plays a game role, as it affects what skills you can get. Gawkers are dedicated to combat, so all of their mob members can learn muscle skills. Only spanners can't learn ferocity skills, and all of them by youths can learn daka skills. Morkers are more tech focused, so they are smarter but not as killy. Only knobs and slavers can learn muscle and daka skills, and only boys and slavers can learn ferocity skills. But all morkers can learn driving and cunning skills, and morker knobs can learn the odd skills. Diggus. Diggus can be summarized as hard mode orcs. Essentially, of the three odd mobs they are the simplest to use, but they suffer a number of penalties in comparison to their orky counterparts. Inferior stats, a special rule that means vehicles will eventually break down, the fact that a digger mob cannot visit mechtown, and thusly get injuries treated at the dock's surgery or have their vehicles tended to until they have won a battle or survived two fights, greater problems getting gubbins, vehicle upgrades, fitted, and increased risk when visiting the dock all make life as a digger much tougher than life as an orc. On the upside, their shamans grant them access to a number of useful tricks and skills. Their troops are all cheaper than orcs, and they can also pick up a number of powerful ancient tech devices. Unfortunately, these devices are extremely unpredictable and put you at the mercy of the random number god. Rebel Grots. The Gretchen Revolutionary Committee is a classic horde type mob. Using its cheap troops to swamp the battlefield in bodies, if it weren't for the very sensible rules dictating that a mob must have enough vehicles to transport them all, and weapons for each mob member, a rebel grot mob could number 48 models strong, right at the beginning of the campaign. Unfortunately, the rebel grots need that kind of numerical superiority to stand a chance, they have the weakest stats of all the mobs, they have to use their own vehicle types. Very flimsy and with very complicated movement rules. Their guns are weak. They can't visit the docks to get injuries treated. They have double the chance to run out of bullets in the middle of a fight. And it's harder for them to earn teeth to buy stuff with. Muties. Muties are the opposite of rebel grots. A small band of elite forces. They have the best gear in the game. Great stats. And are far less at the mercy of the random number god than other mobs. But they are also the most expensive mob. The basic trooper of a muty band is twice the price of his orky counterpart. The fact that they ride on mutant steeds instead of driving vehicles also gives them a number of other weaknesses. Compared to the other mobs. Outlaw Metosical Clubs. Fan made. If you ever dreamed of orc speed freak stylized after hell angels this is a mob for you. This is by design orc mob that is solely concentrated on using bikes. Unlike normal orcs they can actually dismount their vehicles, so some additional modeling is needed to either duplicate some model features or have war biker with removable riders. Or both. They can have one bigger vehicle, but that is it. All other vehicles have to be bikes. To sweeten this deal their bikes and gear are cheaper and their bad men's. Spanner equivalent. Can take care of one additional war bike. They also have their own additional skill table which is were weird and thematic. So very orky. Saying that with so much emphasis on bike their vehicles are very fast but very fragile and have very limited access to a lot of fun. Read very destructive. Gah. They also can't have run that so no grots either. They can have one vice president which is something between boss and a boy though. They are typically screwed in scenarios where they cannot feel their bikes en masse. Their lore is that those are orcs that are rebelling against orc society standards. Such as they are. And big mechs of mechtown. They are outcasts and kind of shady under Greyo and of Gorkamorka orc society. Dealing with stuff that other orcs avoid and doing it kind of mobster way. Such as offering da protection. This makes them somewhat similar to free butters when income is concerned however that can still have fought and play da siege. Dust rats. Fan made. This mob is attempt to introduce imperial guard models and players to the game. Misguided Yajit Hoz needs those Yumis. Their lore is that they were a detachment of Ixen to protect archaeologists on the planet of Angelus and when Space Hulk fell they simply locked down their base. That was conveniently not located near impact site. 
and survived Fallout Vault style through the worst of it. Now they resurface is looking for scrap to rebuild their communication equipment and contact rest of the Imperium. With no astra path that should take only additional few hundred years. P. They are humans and share some characteristics with Degas, like susceptibility to being pinned and T3. They are highly specialized for ranged combat and while with their decent gear this can be devastating if they ever land in CC they are in trouble. Even single boy can be an issue if he manages to board one of their vehicles. On the topic of vehicles, dust rats have their own variants. They have bikes, which are equivalent of orc bikes but much weaker. 7 armor, buggers, that can carry small squads and track reclamation vehicles that are mixed between bulldozer and chimera apparently. Either way dust rats vehicles are overall less durable than their orc counterparts. As for modeling with Jenna Steeler cults bikes and buggers it is a simple task of replacing driver or his parts with egg parts and voiler. Reclamation vehicle is typically chimera or some conversion of it. One possibility is to install crane from terrain set instead of torrent for example. Continued support and legacy. Although Gorkamorka was one of the lesser known specialist games, seriously, even when specialist games was still on GW's website, it wasn't even listed, there is still a good bit of online support for the game. Support ranges from Infac and House Rules to the inclusion of new factions such as Dark Elder when Shadow War. Armageddon snuck into the GW catalogue and there was an unexpected, to GW at least, surge of enthusiasm for the idea of Necromunda returning. It triggered debate as to seeing Gorkamorka's return. While the rumor mill churned on this idea for a while, ultimately GW got cold feet and gave the equivalent of an overclothes hand job instead of what was being hoped for. This game, Speed Freaks, was not what anyone wanted. Being such a forgettable compromise that there isn't even a page for it here on 1D4chan, the home of obsessive, autism-fueled completeness. No foot models, no real campaign system. It's everything Gorkamorka isn't. Although let's not kid ourselves, the models are quite nice. Video game. Long ago in the decade known as the 90s, there were plans to make a Gorkamorka video game for the Dreamcast. The game was never released. Most likely due to the Dreamcast losing support early in its life. A tragedy, really. There were also plans to port the game to Windows, but that also never happened. An early demo of the Windows version is available online. YouTube video trailer is available here. Or just play Crash Tag Team Racing. It's as close as you're going to get to the game.